Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tech Talks number 10. We have a very special guest today, Olivia Diebel. My name is Takaya Honda. This is a place where I get to chat to actors uh, and creatives, maybe in the future, hasn't happened yet, but uh, about their lives <laughs> and <laughs> everything they've had going on, all the work they've done, uh, and what acting is to them, what it means, how they got into it, and hopefully answer some of your questions in the chat if you are watching live. Uh, but enough about that. Uh, actually, no. Please subscribe. Hit the button. Hit the button. Because then more people can see it. Uh, and you can yeah. see tomorrow's. Tomorrow's is a good one, too. Actually, the whole week is good. All of them are good. You should just go back and watch all of them. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Introducing to all of you, here is... Libby Dibble. Yay! Hey! Crowd goes wild. Hello. <laughs> How you doing? That was, plug. that was the best plug I've ever heard. Oh, really? Just watch all of them. They're all great. <laughs> Love it. No, I Why love would it. I talk I down it. any of them? Come on. Um, <laughs> Never good. How are you doing? I'm very good. Um, it's been really nice weather in Melbourne today. It's been really, really nice it weather. It has. It has. Up, I went for a walk. I did a workout. And then I just like sunbathed on my roof today. And then fell asleep. And then I just sat around and got ready for this. So I've had a really quiet, lovely day. Sounds awful. Uh, yeah, it was pretty, yeah, didn't like it at all. Whoop. You've, uh, you've gone quiet. Oh my God, it's our first disconnection, maybe. Oh, no, here you are. Yeah. She's back. It's our first disconnection. Okay. <laughs> She's I back. I didn't hear anything you said. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, well, so, well, let's just cut to you. Uh, so what, what have you, is that, does that, I will speak in a sentence. <laughs> uh, does oh, is that is that like a normal day for you now in isolation? You get up, do a bit of workout. Um... Yeah, so I'm trying. I know for me personally, if I don't motivate myself to get into a routine, I will sleep in. Like I'll stay in bed until three p.m., get up to get food, and then go back to bed, which I don't think is a bad thing. But if you're doing it every day and we like, you know, let, this is like what third, fourth week quarantine. Something. Yeah. I, about that. Yeah. Or it is for me. It's like my third week quarantine. That's not good. Um, and I think in a positive light, this is a real opportunity for me personally to improve kind of my, uh, my well being. I'm, I'm trying to get to a really happy spot, have kind of happy and healthy in my body. So, in, yeah, I've been getting up early. I've been going to get a workout. I then go to the local shop, which is still doing take a takeaway. So I'll grab a coffee and then I'll... Is the connection not working? It's uh, it's it's saying poor connection uh, and you're glitching a little bit, uh, which might be best to try to solve it now so people aren't uh, watching too much of it. Because are you still on your phone or is it on the um, Wi-Fi now? My phone, because my Wi-Fi is unreliable <laughs> cool. I live in a family of five and it's like you know there's nothing to do but watch TV so I never trust my Wi-Fi in my yeah. house yeah um, um, well uh, I don't know let's just keep going okay. and then like there's so much we can do so hopefully everyone at, at, at home can uh, forgive us and this is the best yeah. we can do and this is what happens with COVID-19 chat so <laughs> exactly we're just doing what we can guys yeah um anyway so i i try to be as kind of as productive as possible and then also uh, and also kind of give myself breaks so per se yeah I'll, I'll get up i'll grab a coffee i'll go for a walk, walk get out of the house i'll then come back um and we're in a big house like my family we live in a hat like kind of big house so it's good because we can all like my two siblings and my parents we can all rooms and not mm get in each other's space and then we can also come together and like we've been doing a lot of family stuff like we've all been cooking together we've all been doing board games so it's been really lovely kind of what to have, have you been everyone cooking what, do, do you have a uh, do you have do you take the lead for one meal no <laughs> not at all not at what's all. your specialty we, then are you a chopper although, are you a cleaner are you Ewan and i i kind of sit i play music and annoy everyone <laughs> i don't know if you saw my story yesterday but i'll like really loud obnoxious music whilst people are doing things so i guess i'm a motivator ah. which is i'd say the most important part of cooking well yes you would um <laughs> i'm not making anything make it yeah just the support mechanism however my siblings and i pretty frequently we did this morning as well we'll make pancakes every morning nice because we can it's like i don't know so it's been really nice we've just been kind of chilling out 
um, which has been really lovely. Uh, I've been doing a bit of kind of writing. Uh, what sort of writing? School, like school's coming. Just script, just kind of my own script writing, nice. short film ideas. Just kind of, I, I'm, I write a lot of poetry as well. So I've just kind of been doing that oh, and really? kind of I'm broadening my stuff. It's been a real good opportunity for create. It's been a really good time for creativity um, because we have, and especially the weather's been so nice. So I'm able to sit outside or I'll go to my local park and sit down and write. Um, so it's been, it's been really good. Um, and there's also schools about to start up and I'm still in year 12. So I've still got a lot of schoolwork to do and I'm just keeping up with that. I have two exams next week. One of one is tomorrow. I have my English exam tomorrow. Oh, um, and you're talking to me? Gosh. I'm on my hotspot. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just a brief like intermission. I'm for that if I do that, it'll cut out. Olivia's mum, the great the Kate stream. Gorman. Okay. 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 But, like, right. if you want to change, even if you Where drop out, you? I can I can feel the time. People can talk to me. I'll answer some questions from the chat. <laughs> okay. Sorry, everybody. That was my dad, Matthew, just telling me I should change to the Wi-Fi, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> Right now. All right, and if we lose Olivia, uh, anyone who wants to know some questions from me, because um, I, I should interview myself somehow on this show, do like some pre-played videos or something, um, and, and then uh, they should stay on it, but come in the room too and use it all together. I'm not sure what that means. I think that's someone responding to somebody else. Um, somebody asked me how I got on Neighbours. Uh, I'm like like any actor. I've um, I uh, have we just lost Olivia. She's coming back now. Um, I had to, had to audition through an agent. She's back on the Wi-Fi. Um, let me just double check that it'll still be. Yeah, you're still there. Um, yeah, I think so. How's that? How's everyone? People in the chat can tell us whether they think that's better or worse than the okay. previous. And <laughs> we'll go with that. So I just yeah, I actually just wanted to go. <laughs> yeah, you, you just need to eat, uh-huh. eat a snack and then. Um, yeah, I really do. hungry. Um, yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I was just telling people how I, I had to audition for, for Neighbours like any other actor, really. Um, but we'll, we'll, we won't waste time talking about me right now. Um, yeah, I was, I was going to ask, what, what sort of pancakes do you like to eat? What's your favourite topping? Okay. Really good stuff here. All really. right. <laughs> okay. I actually had an insane, oh, my God, fantastic. I myself a pat on the back. So I had crepes, and then I put cream cheese, avocado, Smoked salmon, a little bit of lemon, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of chili flakes. Yum. I'm a savory gal myself. And you said you couldn't cook. I, I'm I am a big crepes fan too compared to like big I don't think that's cooking pancakes. though. I think it's just putting raw things onto something and then. No, but that's that's cooking. I mean, you know, you've got, you've got to balance the flavors there. You know, the different bits to give you, you know, it's a salt, fatty, acid sour or whatever the last one is. Yeah, yeah, I think you're making me feel a lot better about it than than this. You're just, um, you're just an innate cook. You don't really know what you're doing. You just come up with things and they just taste good. That's all you're doing. Things. Actually, I do that all the time. I make this, I put disgusting things. The other night it was like, um, like leftover night. Sorry, my earring just scared the crap out of me. I could hear my earrings in my headphones and I didn't know what was going on. That's, that's what yeah embarrassing. Your your yeah, that is embarrassing for you. Um I feel sorry for you. Let's right not now. talk about it and I don't want to talk about it. Um so I put in I have I have like a bread roll, buttered both sides, mayonnaise both sides, mustard both sides, then I put half a steak inside with gherkins and onion. Oh my god. Yeah. That, that does sound good <laughs> yes it, just because i'm on it and you have to be nice to me doesn't mean you can lie about my food choices but it was delicious there was no incredible... all of those things are yummy so i can't imagine that being anything but yummy so that's what i'm saying and people are like that's so gross um or i do okay well this one's a bit weird i do avocado vegemite and honey ah uh, see i i actually know this one because my dad i think he would have honey on his toast and then he'd make me toast when I was younger and I'd have Vegemite. So there'd be a bit of honey mixed honey, in with the Vegemite bad, and it, it works well. Because it's like a yeasty kind of taste and then you have that sweetness. Yeah. And then the avocado is just like, it's a feeling. I'm a big, I'm a big avocado supporter. 
Ah, oh, I think everyone should. I'm a big should. advocate for avocado. It's real. It's funny. Like I, I remember going to New York and they go, "Oh, they do good um, Aussie breakfast." And I was like, "What? What's an Aussie breakfast? It's like you know, avocado toast." I was like, "Avocado toast." I was like, "Oh, that's an that's not worldwide. Breakfast. You don't get. Yeah. Oh, you guys don't yeah. do avocado. Like, <laughs> what's that about? We're just like it's such a given. Yeah, just some some sourdough bread with some oh avocado gets you good. Yeah, yeah, gets you good. It's a it's a it's a great topping for. Many many things, um, but let's move away from our, our inabilities to cook. <laughs> we can. We'll just play music in the background. It'll be fun. Yeah, we should do like the chef show styles and just pretend to make food, but not be able to actually make food. Chef show styles, and it's just us picking our music choices, and people are judging their food on how hyped up we've made the chef. That actually sounds That's like an amazing idea. show. It sounds like an, we just yeah. yell at people, just like you like this rap. They're like, no. I'm like, cook, cook. Whilst I play you this music, and we have to entertain them and dance. Ah, yeah. oh, that's a multi-million dollar idea, right? Hey, there. look, people might be at home cooking right now, Lizzie Doers. So go, people at home, you yeah, can do go. it. Come on, let's I, I can't go. put any music on because otherwise YouTube will take the video down. But <laughs> oh, I, f- I was about to just play some music, but we won't do that. No, we. we I'll get I'm not a singer either, so I guess we're just gonna have to do it quietly. <laughs> we can mime. We'll do a mime. Oh dear! Oh dear! <laughs> Quarantine has made us crazy, the guy. <laughs> yeah. uh, is this good viewing? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows anymore? It's time the concept. This. I actually, someone said to me today, they were like, "Oh, it's it's Monday today, isn't it?" And I was like, "Is it? I don't, I don't know. Is it crap? <laughs> no, it is Monday. It is Monday. Uh, yes. See, I only know it's Monday because so I was like, oh, I'm talking to Olivia on Monday. <laughs> Olivia on Monday. No, I'm only, I was hoping it was Monday. If you were saying it's Tuesday, I would have missed my exam that I was going to be oh, yeah. virtually. That's it. So, <laughs> that is good. How do you do the exam? Is that all through, like, are you, like, do they watch you? Like, how does how do they know you're not cheating? <laughs> so, um, I have done, this is interesting, I do online school anyway because I film so often yeah. or I'm in Sydney a lot and working a lot. Like, so... I always did online school anyway from about year 10. So you, this is my third year. Um, uh, so the, the kind of, I'm really fortunate in that sense because my schooling has been pretty good. So like my teachers have been able to really kind of equip because we do it online anyway. So essentially at the start of the year, my parents sign a contract saying that they will be my official supervisor. Right. And so within that, they are then legally bound to watch me as in an exam set. Um, so which doesn't allow for room for cheating. So you get any- really good marks is what you're telling me. <laughs> yes, I get incredible marks. Uh, I am... Blue <laughs> B plus. Actually, I do four subjects. I do French. I do English. Oh, my God, what am I lost to? I do dance and I do legal studies. So those are my four subjects. How do you do um, dance online? I don't, I don't know, man. It's, I'm very confused by my schooling as well. I think the way I describe my kind of schooling, I'm like, what? The, uh, okay, all right, let's do it. <laughs> well, you don't know different, um, I guess. So that's just what you got to do. Yeah. So I, with it, they have like a written component. So it's more so about looking into composition and the, the choreography of some dances and movements. It's really interesting. I really enjoy it. But there was this other components. So the dance has been the one that's taken the most toll because every couple of months they normally take in all the, the kids who are doing distance education because most of them are professional dancers who are taking mm. this course or have some sort of dancing ability. So they come in and we do big master classes and they assess us on our dancing. Right. But last, last end of last term, I was meant to have a dance exam and I had to learn a six-minute choreography piece. And because they weren't there to teach us, they just sent us a link and then we just had to film it and send it to them. Oh, whoa. Well, yeah, it's like a self test. It was yeah, it was just so I found it okay because I just had to learn to learn the dance, do it exactly the same as her with no music, and then send it off. So it was kind of just like a self tape. It wasn't too difficult. Yeah, well, you've got an advantage there, one up on everybody else. Kind of useful. Yeah, well, I don't know. Uh, who knows? <laughs> All right, so let's let's talk about your acting rather than your schooling. Um, yes, please. <laughs> let's, let, let's go back to the start, which wasn't that long ago because you're so young and you've accomplished so much already. Oh, job it. You're going to make me blush. <laughs> make me um, blush. But, like, so you come from a bit of royalty with your, your 
grandparents and your mum, obviously, uh, who, to be fair, both your, your granddad and your mum have been on Neighbours, and yet here you are going and do Home and Away. What's that about? I mean, I come know. on. <laughs> it's a rivalry. I always had to be the black sheep of the family. Um, that's a big joke. I'm not at all. I'm way too similar to my mum to even say that. Um, I don't know. I think it's, well, he was on the Sullivans mm. first, so I guess we've all done super long-running television series. Yeah. Um, I there wasn't an opportunity for me to be on Neighbours. Yeah, that wasn't really um, a serious question. <laughs> he's digging at me. It's like why? Oh, why did you pick Home and yeah. Away? I can't believe. Okay, you, you want me to give you ten reasons why Home and Away is better? And start that fight now. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, well, that, so, that there'll be a bunch of like Daily Mail articles if we do. Yeah, that, that'll so. be dangerous. We probably shouldn't start that. Um, that we'll cook, I'll send you a strongly worded email later, <laughs> Sakaya. <laughs> um, so we just kind of started out initially. So my, as I said, I grew up around performers and my grandmother was always in music theatre, so I was always kind of going to plays and performances. And I remember begging my mum to get to get me, to let me have an agent. And she just kind of never, she was just always like, she just wanted me to have a childhood. Mm. So uh, when I was about eight years old, I just kind of said to her, I need to do this. And a friend um, who's a singer, Natalie Imbruglia. Yep. Yeah. So also was on Navis, just saying. Also was, hey, do you want me to tell a story? You're just going to keep digging at me and all the people we know who are neighbours. No, please continue. Please continue. Okay. So I was saying to Natalie, we're all out to lunch one time, and I said, I really want to be an actress, but my mum won't let me because she wants to have a childhood. I remember I went to the bar. What a crazy idea. What a crazy idea. Why? Well, yeah, why would you want your child to have a childhood? Um, and then Natalie and Brulia said to her, I left at 16 because my mum didn't let me become an actor. So just, you know, you don't want her to run away. Yeah. So mum was like, crap, okay. So we started looking at agents and I submitted some self-tapes and that's how I um, I ended up with Sonia Morata uh, from Manager Management. And then I was just auditioning with her for about two years. Uh, so I got, a, I got an agent when I was 10. Auditioned with her for about two years and uh, then I landed my first gig. Which was, was that Creative Kids? Was that the one? Little Lunch. Oh, was Little Lunch the first one? Because did you do? Because I saw, like, maybe maybe it's a... a... Oh, I did a bunch of short films before that. So my mum was still hesitant to get me an agent. So I was on, like, um, do you know Star Now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was on Star Now when I was eight. And I just, anything that came my way, I just wanted to audition and put it down and do it. And that's how I kind of, uh, Creative Kids kind of found out about me as they were putting out a thing. I so forgot that I did that. Holy crap. Yes, yeah, so that was first. So I was in a short film about super monsters. I, I don't know. I, could, I couldn't really find it. So I did. Oh, okay. I just saw it on IMDb. I was like, film about it's, it's creative I kids TV shows. Monsters. How children can make careers in the arts is what the uh, one liner is, at least. You were. You oh, were okay, reporter. okay, okay. No, no, I know what it is now. This, that was embarrassing. You really threw a curveball at me, the guy. I didn't know what you were talking about. I was in a short film with them first. They scouted me on Star Now. I was in a short film with them. Entered that into Drop Fest and, like, that won some awards. And then they had, like, this channel called Creative Kids. And then they were like, "You, I really liked you in that short film. Can you do some interviews for us? So I did. So do you think that um, your period uh, after you, you broke your TV with your Wii controller at age six and couldn't watch TV till 13. A prime time for me. A prime time for me. Do, do you think that's you had to make up your own little uh, shows in your head and that's what I you... always made up. I was such, I was such like a, a bossy kid. Like even younger than... You like showed leadership I... qualities, not you weren't bossy. N- no, because it wasn't leadership. It was, <laughs> this is what we're going to do. But I remember like going like vividly at five. If I had a play date, I'd tell the I'd bring my dress up and I'd be like, "All right, I've thought of the idea that we're going to do show mum and dad in a couple of hours," and I'd make them rehearse a play. I'd be like, "No, you have to rehearse this play." And they're like, "But I don't want to be that character." I look at them, I go, "Well, you're not going to make up a better idea, so we have to do my play." <laughs> and like then, you know, and then mum would come back to pick me up. I'd be like, "We've got a performance," and it'd be like three acts. There'd be a death and a tragedy and a love and a marriage, and I'd probably be the narrator, so I could always have control. So wow. I was always super creative, and I always like was obsessed with accents. 
and I'd watch shows and get inspired by them mm. since that age. Like I'd still, I'd watch it and go, well, I want to do that. So I'm going to make it. And then I'd film like on iMovie and Starnet and, and Video Star and I'd make movies yeah, wow. like that. And then I'd edit it and have a start and middle. And I was obsessed with it. I was obsessed with writing, filming it. Cause that meant that I could have all the control and it could be exactly what I wanted. Did that, um, did that come, did that like drive to, to make those things did that come from watching your mum or your grandparents do that absolutely stuff? Absolutely watching my mother. When I was two, she, she was in, uh, creating a movie. And then when my, fir- when my, fir- uh, when my brother was born, when I was seven, she was like doing a three part documentary series. Mm. And like, you know, we got to go on these amazing adventures with her and I saw her in Alice Spring directing and then she went to Russia and Germany and France for all these midwifery, like, rally. So kind of seeing her create this thing that then went on and I then was able to see the bigger picture of like she went to a rally that legalized um, home birth in Russia. And it was like, for me, I went, my mother created something that helped with something else. And I yeah. was like, at that point, you just kind of go, something that we can make can then have such a huge impact. And then that was then really brought forward with Little Lunch. Like I, I then saw that that war, that one Logies, it won actor awards, yeah. it won international awards. And then on Home and Away, like with my character who had epilepsy, like Rafi has epilepsy, watching that, then the people come up to me in the street and go, I identify with you. You helped me through this period. And that's kind of the reason that I do it or the reason I have love for it. It's that discovery of going, I can make something real and I can create something that is going to impact people mm. and make them feel them and potentially change. And that is the most incredible thing to me. And I think that's the most amazing thing. We're giving life to something as actors and creators. And I think that's so beautiful. Um, and I, I feel so blessed every time that I can kind of get a script and then I get a director gives me an opportunity to put my, my knowledge and my decisions and my creativity into that. So that's why I'm an actor. Um, and I think that was really, really supported by my mother because she feels the same. And the way that my grandfather, even now, like I'll show him some of the stuff that I do and he'll go, that was a good choice. And the way that they speak to me about choices and direct and acting and beat chains and emotion because it's been around me so much and there was so much creativity and support for creativity that I, and then it's just, it's just normal to me. Mm. Why wouldn't you work your hardest at creating something that could entertain people? And you've obviously seen the effects of that. Um... I think, yeah. And then it wasn't even like there was a potential. It's just like, then I've had proof with that within so many different ways, like watching my mother with, with the home birth, um, with the home, but like the documentary series, or then with Little Lunch, seeing kids come up to me and be like, you're my favorite, like you're Tamara. And then on Home and Away, having people come up and thank me for my performance because it helped them get through a period in their life is just, like it's, some, it's the biggest compliment that our work has impacted someone so much. And like, you get it as well. Like, you know, you had such an, well, it's still your storyline on Neighbours is like, I've, I've seen kind of the news or even like, the Mardi Gras floats, things like that, like the way that um, we impact people is so beautiful and so special. To yeah, me. it's one of the things that I always <clears throat> talk about in interviews um, is about the messages that you do get because um, I've been super lucky, uh, similar to you, in the way that uh, my character came out in the show, the first same-sex marriage, uh, the kidney transplant stuff last year, this stuff coming up now with um, the foster kids stuff, which I'm excited for people to see, which hasn't hit the airs yet, but it's been announced because we had Deborah Lee Finesse on to yep. direct us and um the messages you you get are the, it, it's worth more than anything else you know anything and they're so like i i say this time um and i said this in kind of my last day video when i was leaving it's like without you guys we wouldn't be able to do what we do yeah. like neighbors and home and away couldn't run without you like the reason that we are able to give you this content that you guys love is because of you and the way that they support us and hold us. And I think that's so lovely that it's such a community. And it is like, I, I you know, the, every time there's a new storyline that could make people feel things or get excited about it, it's so cool. And I get so excited, like, you know, even like hearing the foster children being announced. And then that's another thing for us to create and show mm. you guys as well. Yeah. And I think that like, because people talk about like, oh, you know, it, they can be unrealistic or something like that. Um, but... Uh, uh, Granted, there is sometimes with things like, well, 
for those series events to happen maybe is unrealistic but life can be more unrealistic than than what Amazing. our shows are like right now is is crazy it's like we would, you could see a storyline like this on home and away on neighbors where you know there's a virus and everyone has to stay home and that you know you then get the inner conflict of the problems, households yeah. but um but that might be seen as something that's crazy like a crazy storyline um but it's happening and then you hear yeah. of, like people's the romance connections the people dying and all that kind of stuff there's like you hear real stories of people who's in a, a, a matter of few weeks they're uh, partner dies and their child dies and then their grand their parent dies like and that happens in a couple of weeks which is something uh, that might happen on yeah. our shows but it happens in real life so uh being part of shows that have so many thousands of episodes and so many stories we, we end up having the opportunity to represent a very small niche person yeah. that has had a, an experience and they get to see I that i completely in, agree in yeah. shows, and they get is, to say that they feel that yeah um, oh, it's very funny. I've known a lot of occasions I will have done a storyline and then it will happen to me. Like I've lots of times something I'll be like, Raffi will do something or something will happen to Raffi. And then like a similar thing will happen to me. I was like, that's weird. Can you think of an example? That's weird. It's life imitating art. Oh, like, I don't know, like bullying stuff or like she just had schoolwork problems and then she'd get really stressed and it'd be like, huh, that's quite funny. And it is current, and I think it's 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 identifiable, and it's really interesting that we do we can identify both of their characters and then what is going on with the world around. Or I know, you know, I know someone who fell like who, and this is kind of how I base my character when when Rafi went through her epilepsy. I know someone who fell off a horse, developed a brain tumor, and epilepsy at the age of like thirteen. Yeah, wow. It happens, and everyone like people were saying, "Wow, well, she fell what a, a rock fell in her head and she developed epilepsy." I was like. Yeah, it happens, man. Like it's not things happen like that. Um, yeah. it's real life because real life is the most insane thing. Yeah, and sometimes I think people just get lucky, and that sort of that crazy stuff doesn't happen to them, or uh, they don't know, meet someone who's like. Because I've had, I've had, I've met two people who had brain tumors in their twenties, and they just came out of nowhere. It's like they suddenly yeah. just had a brain tumor um, and had to have surgery and had to cut it out. Unfortunately, they're both okay now, but um, and, but to even have them two in the same room together because it's a high, a low percentage kind of thing. Uh, thing yeah. Nuts. Um, or again, also it's like people are like, oh, it's so dramatic and you go, well, yeah, um, but think about the statistics of how many car crashes happen every year. We're showing that with our 27 characters. Mm. And sure, there are billions of people on the planet, but so we're we're telling real stories. We're just doing it with, you know, how, how like what? There's like twenty to seven characters in Home and Away. Maybe yeah, away. Neighbors is about that. That's it's way like too many. high twenties or whatever. At a, yeah, high twenties. So it's like we're telling all of these people's stories with these people. Mm. So of course it's going to be a little bit modified, but if you really think about it, this happens. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what was your? So you went from. Little, little lunch to, and then Home and Away was the next thing. Is that right? Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty quickly, like less than a year. Less what was your audition process the for, like for Home and Away? So we got the the script and it said guest role on the top. Um, and I auditioned for it. I auditioned for it in Melbourne, went in. And oh, then, awesome. yeah, so went in, did it, and then didn't hear anything for ages. And then they said, oh, we want to we uh, have you for a callback. And I was on school camp at the time. Mm. And like my mom had to call the school and be like, she might have to fly to Sydney. <laughs> like I might have to drive to the Grampians to pick her up. And then they told me. And so for the rest of the camp, I'm like, well, I didn't know. And like, no one was telling me anything. And then as soon as I kind of got back from that, they went, okay, well, you're going to go to Sydney. So, and I got on a plane, flew to Sydney. They flew me up for the second audition. And for the second one, I was in the room. I was in the room with Jackson Haywood and James Stewart and did some like uh, sibling scenes mm. and yeah, then just got back on a plane and went home and then waited for ages, like a long time. And then, you know, you kept getting the call. It was like, okay, it's you, you, between you and one other girl. And mm. I'm like, oh, crap, I don't know what I can do. And then I got the call. Uh, Sonia called me and said, you've got the job. And then we were, you know, really happy, so excited. And then, and I remember when it happened, I was coming back from, um, I was coming back from like a school athletics carnival. I just got in the car and my mom looked at me. I just like started crying. I was like, I got it, I got it. Because it's, you know, it's, 
you like you hear about the stories: Margot Robbie, Natalie Imbruglia, mm. the Hems, you know, Chris Hemsworth. People go on those shows, and it's a massive stepping stone. Yeah. So I was just so, and I was thirteen. Like it was just massive to me. And they said, "Here's the catch." They said, "It's a three year contract." And that's when the penny kind of dropped, and we were like, well, "What are we gonna do?" Because like, what, what age know, were you then? Were you. I was 13, my sister would have been 11 or 10, and my brother would have been like four or five. So it was like, you know, what do we do? Um, and my grandparents kindly enough stepped up and they said, we'll move to Sydney with her. So I moved to Sydney with my grandparents when I was 13. Wait, so, so they were in Melbourne too? Yeah, they were in Melbourne too. And That's they amazing. Said, well, yeah, I'm so, so lucky for the support mechanism that I have for my family. Like, it's incredible the way that they have hold, held me up throughout my career. Um, yeah, so I moved to Sydney with them. And then for the first two years, I was with them. And, you know, my grandma was became my mum. She cooked me lunch, you know, her online school. She helped me with my schoolwork. They'd run lines with me. They'd wake me up in the morning. Yeah, and I'm so lucky for that experience because I got so close with my mm. grandparents in that point in time and like we now have a connection that will is so different and has been so beautiful because the uh, the way that kind of we we treat each other now is is a lot like mother and daughter yeah um which is lovely and then yeah even with my grandfather i'd run lines with him every night and he'd give me acting direction so i was with you know one of the kings of vaudeville in australia who's yeah. helping me with my like i was just I'm so lucky that I had the, that kind of knowledge constantly around me for such kind of a difficult, like at home, like learning the amount of lines and the kind of pressure that we have is tough. Like there's oh, like over 50 pages a day sometimes and you're working 12 hour days. And yeah, I was so lucky to kind of have my support mechanism as them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that that's an incredible thing for them to do, but I guess also it helps having them be within the industry and understand what you just need to do um, but also to be able yeah, to so, read lines with you and direct you i mean that's pretty awesome yeah, or having it was my own personal coach and someone who i like knew was going to be good and helpful and uh like lift me up to the fullest like to the fullest so it was yeah incredible experience um yeah and i like even after now the way that kind of i am with them and they are with me it's so lovely because i had such like a close kind of connection with them and then for the final year that I was there, my parents decided to move up. Um, so I was 15, turning 16. Mm. Uh, and they moved up and we all moved in the country, like in kind of west, like uh, like a, a Pennant Hills way. So quite far oh, away. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know where Pennant Hills is. Um, yeah, yeah. So we moved out there in a big old house. And my siblings went to school, like a local, a local and then, yeah, I lived with them in Sydney for a year and then my contract came to an end and then I <laughs> moved to Canada. <laughs> so I really enjoy just confusing my family's schedule. Yeah, screw them. Frankly. I'm going to do what I want to do. You know, it's stability. We don't know it in this household. No, no. I don't think any actor has. Um, no. What was, your, what was your first day on Homer's like? So overwhelming and exciting because I remember, so I'd been, like I just arrived and then had to go get my hair cut. I was delirious, like so tired. So flew, went, got my hair cut, um, did makeup and wardrobe tests. And then they put me up in a hotel for like the first month. Yep. So yeah, so I was in this hotel. I was having a sick time, you know, I was in a new state with, and my mum was there for the first couple of weeks. Um, and just like, you know, I, I, and then I went in for the rehearsal period on that same day and was so tired and like Jimmy was telling me how to do stuff and, and the rehearsal period is different for uh, Neighbours as it is to Home and Away. So Home and Away we sit down and go through our scripts whereas you guys like do a full blocking. Well, we don't anymore. We did when I started oh. um, and we would have we'd have the studio, so the indoor interior stuff, we would have uh, a, re a rehearsal of most of the scenes um, yeah. but then we stopped that. And we did a full, like, read-through uh, of all six episodes, which would take about three hours on a Monday afternoon. And then... Yeah, we did that on a Friday. Yeah, the and then after five, about a yeah. few months of that, and because we're shooting six eps 
which is one more than you guys a week. We yep. just ran out of time. So then one more um, than you yeah, guys, one, one more, more than one more. you guys. Um, Whatever. That it just we just didn't have the time for it. So it it we now just turn up and go. Um, and wow. hopefully you've done your work. <laughs> um, and and I think it's kind of cool though because you are forced to then know your stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a trial by fire. Like anyone who hasn't done much before who comes on the show. Um, I guess it helps that they don't know that other shows you might get an opportunity to rehearse it something. Opportunity to rehearse, yeah. Um, but it definitely means that you turn up on set and you just have to be able yeah. to go. And any problems yeah. that you have, um, hopefully you can pick them up beforehand. But, I mean, you're shooting so much it's hard to read too far ahead. Um, and you can go to the director and talk about it. But otherwise you're turning up on set. And it has been a show that I've learned to turn up and have a solution to the problem that I'm about to tell them is there. <laughs> yeah. Which, which happens relatively often. But... Yeah. We do that, huh? Like, I just, like, thinking at home in a way you have torrential rain. We're like, all right, well, we're shooting this half inside. You just kind of, it's really one of those things. It's like, all right, well, how do we fix it? Let's do it. Let's go. Which I think was awesome because I now have that drive of going, there's a problem, we need to fix it. It's it's like everyone's involved or it's really communal. Like, if there's a camera problem, we all, you know, okay, well, how can we, how can an actor save time? Or we're running really behind. How can we pick it up? there's a wardrobe malfunction someone's got the wrong one okay well how can i change it how can we do this i think it's a really communal family in home away and i was so appreciative to ha- to be have such kind of support behind me yeah so the did you so, so what other lessons do you think you've learned through that experience that so, maybe you didn't expect to learn even yeah i didn't expect to learn that's that's interesting because i was going to say like i've learned oh i'm going to keep talking i have to go grab my computer charger um, oh. So I obviously learned the, the essentials of like, you'd learn up, you know your lines, you're quick. I think I think the most important lesson or a really valuable one for me was that I learned to make choices um, and that my character was my own. So if I was reading something, I would go, okay, well, how would I, what's my why? Why am I doing this scene? What's the point? How can I get my point across? So I would make choices. It's like with such a fast pacing TV show and the kind of timing that it it goes under, you need to know your character. Mm. So the prep work that I'd have to do, I'd have to go home and go, why is she saying this? Why is she feeling this? What are my underlying suspicions and problems? And I got to know her so well because I was her for three years that that then got really easy. And then I would know my choices and the director would just trust me. And I really put that into place. Then when I was on Secret Society of Second Born Royal, I showed up to set or with the director and it's a very, very different, like I'll get into kind of how different it was between the two of them, but I showed up on set and when we did the first table read, I had all my choices. Mm. And so when we did this insane table read, I'd never done anything like it before. They had all of the head producers on Skype. We were all in Canada all of the writers were there, like the entire team. There's probably like 50 to 60 people at a table and then another 50 to 60 live streaming in. And you kind of had to act your lines at that point. Yeah. And I didn't realize, and thank God, because in in rehearsals, or I know in Home and Away rehearsals, you just kind of read your lines and you're running through and getting comfortable with it. Yeah. Like, not like that. Like, this table read is them to assess if you're, like, if you can kind of act. So, thank God I'd had that prep and had made my choices because people were laughing. And I was like, awesome. And they were like, and then I got complimented later saying, I really liked your choices with your character. That was, like, the most valuable lesson that I've learned. And I will now do that for auditions. I'll go, what's my why? What's my how? How can I give it a backstory? How can I make it interesting? How can I make it creative? Um, so I guess Home and Away may, taught me that, to make choices. Because choices are good. Whether they like it or not, it's your ch- decision on an act- you, your decision as an actor mm. is, you know, it, that's, that's the only thing we can do. That's free slate. It's also taking ownership of the role too, rather than feeling like agree. you're trying to reach for some, something else. It's like, no, no, this is my version of this character and this is the I choices that agree. that character makes. That so. I'm making, yeah. So, um, so yeah. Uh, that was that was probably the most valuable lesson. Respect everyone, I think, as well. Like it's such mm. a com- a communal place, and we all work so hard on that show. So I think I really learned the awareness that it's not just the actors, mm. you know. Like so I think some people go, "Oh, well, you, you know, you're a film star, so we have to treat you, you know, with such respect, or kind of, you know, walk around eggshells around you." And you go, oh, "Like the 
the wardrobe and the makeup work, longer hours than us, you know, setting up sets. So because Home and Away was so close and everyone was working 14, 15 hour days, you just give such respect to the the crew. Mm. And then you really, you hold that. And because you then become friends with them because you're hanging out with them every day, you get personal with them. Then going on to another film set where I know with Secret Society, it was a lot more like, I get here, here's my call time, makeup. Okay, we film, now you get to go home or you have a two hour break, now you can go. It was super kind of um, a lot more, yeah, I was very pampered. It was very pampered. <laughs> and I kind of was freaking out a bit because Australia is kind of like, we were out like everyone else, dickhead. Yeah. Like, just, you know, <laughs> yeah. go get lunch in the other room, sit down with us if you want. Yeah. So I think because I had that knowledge that everyone was working sometimes triple as hard as I am, you just develop that kind of respect. And I think that's lovely in Australia that we do have such respect for our our equal um, our, our equal cast and crew. Yeah, and I, they, they get forgotten a lot. Um, a lot. And right now is, is a it's real tough yeah, time. because I was going to say currently it's it's tough. Don't let, like we're letting, you know, the whole don't let um don't let freelancers fall through the cracks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because none of these shows exist without them. Uh, and you know we can act all we like, but we can't point the camera at ourselves. We can't hold a boom over nope. our heads. We can't light ourselves. Yeah, we, we can't, can't, can't make all the props. Selves, yeah. We can't. Like, there's so many jobs that I go behind a television it. show. Um, and I think that's often forgotten. Um, because of the negative reaction that'll come to um. You know, people like us saying, oh, you know, the our industry needs these funds or whatever is that, oh, you know, you're saying that from, you know, earning all the money as a star. It's like, we're not talking about us. We just, no. the, we're, we like in the shows, Home and Away and Neighbours, we're the face of it. Yes. But we're not. Essentially. We're not... So, but then it, like, it's a double edged sword of people going, well, you just want it, but you get paid. So, well, no, you're only going to listen to us because you only see us. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Like if, if, if our second boom operator came and did a video on his Instagram, that's. No one's going to see it's that. Not hold any relevance. We're, we're using the yeah, voice that we're given uh, to try and raise the awareness for everyone who's involved with the industry, which is a very, very, very large amount of people, uh, more than more than there is for mining and that kind of thing, which is you know gets a lot of what it wants. Um, and I would hate to see the industry uh, suffer as much as I feel it's going to in the next twelve months. Because yeah, I agree, it. and I think it's it's heartbreaking again because what are we what are we doing whilst we're in quarantine? We're on our phones watching creators, so it's like mm. we're, we're helping during a time of kind of crisis and 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 a lot of fear and sadness. We are producing what is keep, keeping people distracted, and they don't feel there is enough appreciation for the people and everyone who works hard for that. Yeah. Anyway, the uh, let, let's sort of like sidestep into something that's sort of relevant to that is like how with Home and Away obviously it comes with a, a large social media following, uh, and you've yeah. you've very much uh, grabbed that with both hands, and I've, I've been quite successful with it. Um, what's yeah. your what was your initial approach to it, and and what have you discovered as you've grown in that world? Um, how you can with the power of it that you can utilize, and how uh, not to succumb to the negatives of it as well. Yeah. So I have definitely grown and changed on my Instagram. I mean, I started out when I was 13, mm. so it's obviously going to be very different. I would post a lot more when I was younger. Like I'd post every day and I'd post my selfies and then I'd post a video that I thought was funny. And then I'd post all these random things. Um, and I think I felt like because I was 13 and all these 13 year olds were following me, we were friends. And I had these connections with people. So I owed to them to tell them everything. Mm. And then I did, like, I remember, I, I like, like little lunch, I kind of banged up automatically 2,000 followers as soon as I got Instagram. So that was quite big. And then slowly then when I went on Home and Away, I then gained like 1,000 to 3,000 followers every week. And then eventually, like, I, I banged up to 200,000 followers and then kind of plateaued here. So it was a real growth and it was quite overwhelming. Mm. Um, but I did, I think I always felt like I owed it to people because the way that they would speak to me or because they then also, it wasn't just on Instagram, right? They'd see me every day in their living room at 7 p.m. So it was like on a lot of platforms, I was so familiar to them. And then, you know, I think then I got a bit older and I hit puberty and then people started having opinions on how I looked or what I ate or what I said or, you know, things like that. And then slowly I kind of was a bit more like, ah, oh, you guys actually don't really get a say on what I'm going to have for dinner. 
um, which was good. I'm glad that I had the realization and took the step back because now I will really just post kind of photos that I like or, you know, my work photo is I'm a lot more kind of work orientated on my social media. Now I will talk about kind of things I'm doing or things I'm passionate about. I'll post a lot less. Um, and I think more so I'm more interested now and in cool photos as well. So photos that either I've taken or that fits more of an aesthetic and that, and that's not me being less personable. It's just more me growing into the person that I want to become mm. and then letting people just see that because I don't, I don't know everyone in my life. It's my life. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm still 17, so I'm still growing and discovering things for myself, but those can be personal discoveries. Um, so a lot more now, it's a lot more kind of not like I won't post every day. I won't talk about everything that I'm thinking, everything that I'm saying, what I think about everything, because some things just kind of, you just need to internally think. And that's my personal opinion. I know a lot of people don't follow that. And I think that's fine. I think people would argue that we do owe it to people because, you know, you guys help me make money every time I get a brand deal on Instagram. That's because of my followers and I am really appreciative, but I just kind of decided just for my kind of mental health. If I don't have people commenting on what they think I should do or how I should be dressing or how much I should weigh, I don't then have to feel that pressure. Yeah. Because I haven't told anyone. Yeah, and you shouldn't have to feel that no, pressure. No, no, absolutely yeah. you shouldn't. But I think if you do let people in, they are entitled to an opinion. It is a, it's like in the sense that if I'm a, if I post something, you can comment on it. I have left commenting open. Yeah. And that's you know, you're telling me your opinion. And that's okay. But it's up to me to go, well, if I don't want your opinion and I don't want to be affected by it and I know I'm going to be affected by, by it, I'm not going to post it. Yeah, yeah. And that's been a much better place for me. And I'm in a much better place kind of mentally uh, and in my own body. I feel more confident as I'm just releasing things that I feel good about. Mm. And I'm... And knowing that yeah. you feel good about it is, is enough so that you go, if, if there is a negative comment about it, to be able to try to use a strength. But I like it. Uh, but I like it, so yeah. that's okay. And that's not to say that I don't uh, want to feel judgment because I think if I live in a world of going, well, I only feel good about this. It's not that. Like, it's not, I am open to people's opinions. I'm not, you know, I have a lot to learn and I'm, I'm very interested to listen because I think people have important things to say. But I mean, more so if I post a bikini photo and someone goes, you're fat. It's like, well, what was what are you gaining from that homie what are you doing yeah. um and i think i did used to be affected by it when i was when i was little because i was still kind of discovering how i felt or who i was or what i wanted in life or my fashion sense even um and i would be more affected by it and kind of now that i've grown into myself and given myself and separated the two separated my own life and instagram mm. i now have the time where i could post a bikini photo and someone comment and i go well i feel really good in my body yeah and i've given myself that opportunity to have that journey and now i'm, I'm comfortable with it well, i think you've sort of hit a nail on the head really with the idea of feeling the pressure to feel like you needed to post constantly you need to keep people updated you need to keep share everything all your thoughts i think a lot of young people and well actually anyone that's that's in social media feels this pressure they've got to share everything and that's how that's yeah how, for sure you know that that growth or something can happen but in and reality i almost feel worse yeah i agree sorry just to say that i almost feel worse for youtubers or vloggers because their whole kind of creativity and content creativity is that they are that person. Mm. I am an actor anyway. So my job is to pretend to be someone else. So I am lucky in the sense that I can take a step back because people, you know, I'm not constantly online going, this is what I'm doing today. This is how I feel. Cause some like, you know, vloggers and YouTubers have to do that. That's yeah. their job. That's their expectation. And I feel a lot worse for them because they as a living have set up that they kind of have to constantly be telling people things. And that'll be yeah. tough. Cause that, that is a lot of scrutiny and I kind of, I, I, I pat them on the back because that's, they're giving themselves open fire for people to give them opinions. Yeah. I get, and yeah, we've, I all got... succumbed, we've all succumbed to criticism, you know? So it's like, we all know how tough criticism can be sometimes and sometimes it's unnecessary criticism. So it's like, I've just made the decision that I don't want the unnecessary criticism. So I'm taking myself away from that. Yeah, I think that's a, a smart decision. Uh, people are commenting that you're so wise, so wise beyond your years. Uh, <laughs> which I... Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> no, it, it's really true. I mean, I think even when I first met you, which must have been that that 
it's Oscars, but it's not the Oscars. It's the like Australian uh, Oz Oscars. Yeah, um, I would have been about just just fifteen. I was just fifteen. And even even then, meeting you, I was like, wow, you can you just you switched on with a lot of stuff, which I think it's helpful having you know family that have been in the industry yeah. so a, a bit more aware. Um, I, I, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah, have you have you had mentors outside of your family? Anyone like acting teachers and stuff? For absolutely. So my um uh, two gens actually. So for little lunch we had this this woman uh, Jenny McNair who was like our kind of like our on set mother. So my parents weren't allowed on set mm-hmm. on little lunch. Um, which was interesting. It was just it was just so kids could kind of work in the own environment. It was a kids friendly environment. And sometimes parents can impact that because kids if they feel shy will revert. So it was very much kind of a, no, this is a professional set. So we had this um, this tutor, Jenny, and she just was like this wonderful mum. And the way the environment that she set up for us was such like an open space to talk and, and run through things with her. She was a real comfort and important person to me. Um, on Home and Away, the, the coach, Jen Hegney, who is incredible and is to like, I, again, hold her in such high regard she every week would have like an hour to two hour session with me. And we'd just either, if I needed to talk, if I needed to run other, I'd run Shakespeare with her very frequently just so I could kind of get out of the home and away script land. So she just was so fantastic and such an outlet for me as well. Um, and a great James idea. Stewart, who played my brother, we, we'd have insane kind of long chats and cause he was so wise and had been in the industry so long. I, I really respected and admired his opinion and the same with Emily Simons as well. I spent a lot of time with her because she played my foster mum. So, yeah. like, I'd, I'd, I'd go to her house for dinner. I'd stay over a lot. Like, she was, she became a real kind of second mother to me as well, and I was really appreciative of that. So I had all these people who were in the same boat as me. We were all doing the same work, and them going, it's going to be okay. You're going to be okay. It was really kind of heartening and yeah, helpful. Yeah, that is really nice. I mean, it, it's always good to have people who you respect go, you know what, you'll, you'll be fine. You, you know. Yeah. There's a, yeah. that in itself, even if they don't believe it can make, can make it for you, you know, like it can, and I'm sure I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying that they did that, but I'm saying that like that positivity, like it's amazing how much like affirmations coming from people, whether it be an audience or, or not, uh, Absolutely. can, can have impact. a positive effect, you know? Yeah. Um, so why people put hate out there, I like it, it boggles my mind in a lot of ways. Um, and I, mm-hmm. But it, you know, it's it's. I try to think whenever that sort of I'm confronted by that is just like how how much pain are you are you in and and why why is this the way that you're trying to make yourself feel less feel pain? better? Yeah, um, I completely agree. I'm so sorry. I'm getting a notification about my Wi-Fi again. Um, I'm just gonna try and change networks. If I cut out, out I promise to be back. I'll interview myself I'm just, once I'm more. So, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I thought that. Well, that I guess it's a good part. I'm really sorry, everyone. I'm having insane problems. No, this is this is what happens with the tech talks because it's live and we are, yeah. you know, it's via Skype, which is the only way I've figured out being able to do these sorts of interviews. Um, so it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all comes with the territory, and I hope everyone understands that. I think you know the the biggest the bigger reason why I'm doing this is so that uh, I can bring some content to you guys at home. Um, for whilst especially in the uk where you're only having two eps a week um you can get something see some of the actors uh get an insight into what our lives are like the reality of them because like we've been talking about instagram you see that version of us and they are versions they're not um i will switch to a view just of myself uh they're not to to a degree they're realities but even though even for the people that i know that, that post a lot um it's still a version because you know, you you kind of can't put every aspect of yourself into. Um, here's Olivia coming back. You can't put every aspect of yourself into those things. Um, you're back. I can see you. Hello. Sorry, sorry everyone. Um, I think this is going to work better. As I'm in a family of five, so I've got I'm someone's watching something downstairs, and you and streaming Minecraft. So we've got a lot of people on our bandwidth. Yeah, well, and that, that's what happens. That's what happens. This part of the being in isolation, um, these things sort of happen, and, and that's just part of this life. This is an example of, yeah. of the reality of isolation um, and us dealing with it, you know. Um, so, and I was just mentioning that why I was doing this and, and trying to provide a, a, 
a realistic look or, or a deeper dive into the lives of actors and stuff as to how we yeah. live and um, like what we we're saying in terms of Instagram, where you can attempt to put all of these aspects of your life on it, but it's still a version of yourself. You're still, yeah. you know, it's a curated version of I a life. I completely agree. And it, I think it is, uh, yeah, and it's definitely, or I just, um, I was saying this to someone, I've just gotten on TikTok uh, yeah. as well as something to do and just another form of creativity. And you're a dancer, so and you're again, it's that. different. Yeah, no, it's fine. But so my, my very good friend, Josh Houston, who is a, um, he is a, has a big Instagram flowing. He's a model and he's, he's, uh, he's an actor as well. And it's just this thing of going, he was saying to me, well, on my Instagram, I'm perceived purely on my looks. And he says that, you know, and as a model, that's, that's a component of that. And he said, but on TikTok, you know, it is about my comedy and the type of humor that I'm into. And then he said, and then we act with my acting, that's like, you know, it's another serious component. And it's true. Like on my TikTok, I'll be a, kind of a lot more funny or I guess I'll, I'll say something that I maybe wouldn't have posted because it is a different, it's a different version of myself again on another platform, mm. um, which is just so interesting that we do that. And then, you know, like if I'm doing an interview for a television show or press release for something else, it's like you're then a different version again, you yeah. know? Yeah, well, which is just, you're just putting on like, back, people talk about like, oh, acting must be so hard. And I always say like, no, you act all the time. You act different to your parents. You act different to the police. You act different to your best friend. You act different to a person that you are interested in. Uh, they're all, that's, that's sort of, it's basically what acting is. It's just teaching, is telling yourself a different truth than trying to portray it. Yeah, it'll, yeah. I completely agree. I think we do it all the time. So, uh, and I think in the way with what you're saying in terms of TikTok and, and the different types of versions of people that you see on each of those things. It's what, it, what, it's what, and you know what it is? It's going to appeal to someone. I know my audience is going to appeal to be me being more goofy on that. Whereas on my Instagram, the way that I set it up, people are going to appeal more to the cool, vibey photos that I now Yeah, post. and it's also just a different creative outlets and different creative voices within yourself. You don't have to be one one, one version of a person across everything all the time because Absolutely. that's just not what we are as humans and especially as actors who have to become other people. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so anyway. <laughs> uh, you, you, Gosh, you're really deep into yeah. <laughs> personal experience and change and who we are yeah we're, we're getting we're getting deep um deep with the deeble um beautiful i actually have that tattooed on my stomach deep with the deep. <laughs> yeah. no i don't i don't know why i said that i should have let me let me say that joke again that'd be a good tattoo to get on my stomach <laughs> yeah, it I'm, I'm just gonna i'm just gonna up. leave that, that alone um so i i heard from a little I don't, I don't know. <laughs> You're, um, yeah, I, it wasn't funny or smart. To, to try and um, oh. change the subject completely, you are, you, I heard that you uh, were a big fan of a show called You're Skidding Me. Uh, oh up. my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I loved You're Skidding Me. I loved it so much. I just wanted to be them because they just were creating skits. Does that make you not that there's show is a prank show, but did that make does that make you a bit of a prankster? No, I'm not into it. I don't like pranking people. Actually, I don't pranks make me feel really uncomfortable. Yeah, like I hate, I hate this is my pet hate. Like the pranks on couples, like couple pranks. I broke her new shoes, or like. <laughs> I don't know, like, I'm breaking up with her, or, like, cheating friends. Like, yeah. why the hell would you do that? What the hell? If, so, if my boyfriend, well, I, like, I walked in and she, like, got a fake actor, pretend to cheat on me yeah, and film it, I'd be like, what the hell? What the hell are you doing? That's abuse. <laughs> it's not funny. Yeah. Sorry, I get very passionate about it. I like I'm it. not it's a good. huge prankster. I think it's just, I also am not into emotional manipulation of any form. I think as an actor, this is what I define is that it's fake. Like I'm writing a script, two people know about it. We're creating a react, like a, a real, a form of reality, but then we're producing just that. Yeah. Yeah. I also don't like being like messed with because I get really confused and I don't and know. You what's don't have going control on. over it, which I feel is like a. <laughs> yeah. So I think what I liked about your skidding me was that there was skit. Like yeah. it was like, it was a little, it was a written two minute banter and then it was done and then it'd be interviews. I don't know. I really like that component of it. I didn't like the prank component of it. I just think it's unfair. It's like, don't, they don't know, man. Why are you doing that? Do you, to them? Does, that, does like that come it. from like an early childhood experience of being pranked and then hating it from that point on? 
I think I, oh, I guess it's just why I don't like being screwed over. I don't like tricks. I like, I guess it's no, I guess it's more so again with my kind of, I need to be in control of a situation or I need to know that I'm in control. So it's like, if I don't, then you mess me up. I'm like, that was really uncool and embarrassing. Did you get pranked much on Home Alone? Um, no, just kind of like jump scares. Oh no. If I like sometimes, this annoyed me. They'd be like, are you doing, like, they'd be like, oh, do you want to run lines with me? Like, Jimmy would do this with me sometimes. He's like, you want to run lines? I'm like, yeah, sure. And I'll pull up the script and he goes, what are you reading? And I'm like, the script for this scene? He goes, no. And then he'll show me another script um, that I have, like, masses of lines in. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm on in 15 minutes and I haven't learned this. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, nah, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I don't, but I don't like it because I'm not in control and I'm not okay. Yeah. I don't like pranks. Fair enough, fair enough. Um I like surprises. I'll, I'll like, just I make a, I'll send a message to those people just... not to come into your room now. Like... Yeah, cool. <laughs> no, I like, they throw a smoke bomb. Well, or it's just like the murder pranks. It's like, prank on my girlfriend. She's going to think I'm dead. What? what the? Why would you do that? For entertainment values. And then it's also like super confusingly fake. Because like, obviously, you're not a makeup artist or a professional solution. You put tomato sauce on your head. <laughs> And then you've like told your girlfriend to act surprised, and then she's like, "Oh my god, he's dead!" I do sometimes accidentally prank Amy, my fiance, uh, because David's been hit by the same Ute twice on the show, uh, and obviously both times would have some. Yeah, I've been kidnapped by the same man about three times. It makes sense, <laughs> it makes sense. on the TV show, not <laughs> in real life. Yeah. I just meant in the sense that you get it gets a bit frequent. Yeah, yeah. and. Um... So I'd have some makeup with like bruising and whatever, and I'd think I wouldn't wash my face on set at the end of the day, and I'd come home, and they'd be like, "Oh my god, what happened?" I'm like, "What?" Because <laughs> it's just like uh, blood. Yeah. Um, all right, it's six thirty, which means everyone should go watch Neighbors if they're in Australia. But we'll just quickly scan through the chat and see if there's any. Um, yeah. I've I've noticed a couple, and then I've forgotten what they were whilst I um uh, <laughs> been talking because it's been too interesting. <laughs> whilst we talk about personality changes and pranks. Um, and just checking that we've kind of covered some of these. Um, have you have you felt have you has it been hard doing the studying and the filming at the same time? Oh my god, yes, it has been. But I again, I have such a huge my lights just given up at this point. Everyone, um, hey, so I'm right. sorry if I'm in all right. half darkness. It's like you got um, a two face thing going on. It's good. It's good. Really yeah, I just wanted to see my light and dark side. Uh, <laughs> You'll turn your face which has, way depending on what you're talking about. Yeah. It has been quite difficult. Um, I think the most difficult thing is time management. So it's like if I have an audition, you need at least a week. I'll, I'll need a couple, like at least a couple hours prep on that. Yeah. And that takes a couple hours to film yeah. and then editing that and send it off. That's a whole day sometimes. Um, and, you know, it's year 12, so there is a lot of expectation. But I have, we've kind of gotten into the right routine now. But that took all of years 10 and 11. Mm. Um, but now I'm efficient with my time and I know what I need to complete. And I have my French tutor, my English tutor, uh, my, yeah, my English and legal tutor, my, my, my dance tutor. So it's like, it's good. I've got people and I've got support mechanisms and it is difficult because if you think about it, you are doing this by yourself, you and your parents, if you are doing distance, it is a lot more complicated because you don't have that kind of schoolwork energy around you. It is a lot more like a, if you want to succeed in this, you have to do it yourself Yeah. because you're alone, home alone on a computer. Um, and I did find motivation really tough for a long time, but I want to finish. It's something that I need to succeed in and I need to complete. Um, so I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Good for you. Um, Thank you very much. <laughs> how was the uh, favorite storyline from Home and Away? The epilepsy one was insane. Yeah. Um, and was kind of the most emotionally challenging, I think, because I was I did my own I did all my own seizures, um, and it was a real roller coaster. And I I got to research and speak to people, and that was like I think, and the the, the response that that got was so heartwarming as well. Like the the way people kind of responded to me with, it, with me having epilepsy was so lovely. Um, that it was such a, a beautiful experience. And I just realised we haven't spoken much about secret society, so give us a little little bit about that. What was that like? Yeah. Uh, so I was recently came out from doing a Disney movie called Secret Society. I'm just trying to see that. Called Secret Society of Secondborn Royals, um, and it is about. Some kids who have some superpowers and it's pretty cool. Um, and I'm really excited for everyone to see it. It was an insane experience. Like we, I lived in Canada for about four months 
um, and just had the most incredible experience of my life. And I got to work with some amazing people and people I was fans, I have been fans of for a long time as well. Um, when does it come out? And was just soon. I don't know when it comes out. Um, it's Disney Plus, right? But soon it's on Disney Plus. Yeah, guys. So please subscribe to Disney Plus, and you'll you'll see me. And my name is Princess Roxana. What, do you have superpowers? Um, and it was maybe, maybe not. You just gonna have to watch the movie. <laughs> was there much? Were you dealing with like a whole bunch of CGI and that kind of stuff in that? Yeah, it was so insane. Did it's you have to talk gonna to be insane. Board? No, I didn't. Oh, but it was really cool, kind of the prep. And part of you seeing the superpowers being made and how the CGI and talking to the CGI guys about the superpowers and how they're going to edit it in was really cool and really interesting because I kind of never experienced anything like that before. What either. was the pace like on that set? A lot slower. Like, you know, it was a uh, hour and a half over three months. <laughs> so, you know, you'd probably do two to five scenes a day opposed to six episodes yeah. a week. Do, do you like, um, did you like so that pace lot, in comparison or was it just different? It was different. Like I think it was different stakes too. Like there was CGI, there was so much costume and makeup involved. It did take longer, but the shots were different or the scenes were longer. Um, so it was just a different experience. Um, and I'm glad that I got to do both, you know, cause I now feel comfortable with both of those kind of movements. Oh, cool. Um, well, yeah. everyone should check that out, and everyone should go watch Neighbours now, and then if they have to watch Home and Away later. No, it's not on yet. It's not on it's still the 18th or something. I think it's back. No, it's tonight. Oh, tonight starts Tonight. Back. Does that back? Yes. Oh. So after, watch Home and Away, guys. Yeah. Seven on you, seven. You have to. Um, but, you know. that's You have to. Um, I'm saying you have to. <laughs> he said if you want to, I'm not. You have to. <laughs> it's what you have to do. It's mandatory. I'm sorry, everybody. Well, thank you, Olivia Diebel, for joining us. Thank you for having me i had a really lovely time to you for great length of periods of time that's not a sentence oh Uh, you too takaya you're super interesting and like people are saying super wise um regardless of your age um so thanks for joining us i really appreciate that and thank you everyone at home for coming to tech talks this is number 10 uh we've been listening to olivia diebel um sorry about the wi-fi issues but that's just something that happens when we're doing yes i'm very when sorry we're doing these kind of things and now my lighting problem as i disappear into the dark um <laughs> Yes, but thank you for bearing with us through that. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Um, and I get to announce the next guest today uh, for tomorrow. Uh, I can speak well too. Today has been a struggle for me word-wise. Um, but very excitingly, we have another Home and Away actor, uh, but a current actor at the moment, Courtney Miller, um, who seems like the sweetest person on the planet. Um mm-hmm. So please tune in tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, uh, as it always is, I hope. Uh, please, if you're watching this later, leave a comment. Um, but otherwise, hit subscribe, hit the like button, do all those things everybody else says at the end of their YouTube videos. Uh, I'm not really a YouTuber, so I don't really know the full spiel. <laughs> so I'm just... I, you did brilliantly. You did brilliantly. Thank you, Olivia. I would subscribe. I am subscribed. Well, so I'm glad to hear it. All right. <laughs> anyone <laughs> anyway, anyway everyone else go have their breakfast or have their dinner uh i love you all and thank you and goodbye